What's going on everybody? I have a bunch of new products I'm excited to show you and talk about for 2020. Miniature painting, let's get into it right now. Boop, boop, boop. The first up is the Liquitex Muted Collection. This I have in my hands. Have not busted this out yet, but I'm very, very excited about it. If you've been playing with your airbrush for a while, you know that shooting these type of inks through your airbrush is just heaven. It's so, so good. You don't have to thin them. They spray perfectly. They're so great for adding uh, interest into shadows. You can be putting things. Let me jump back on the big camera. If you see here, the Hulk, I've been building up purples into the shadows. He's very, very early in stages, but... Anyway, if you are interested in getting that kind of interest into your shadows, inks are the way to do it and through the airbrush. You can definitely go with like Dalarani FW inks. You can find them on Amazon. I'll link them also below. But this set here, I don't know if it's new. I just saw it at the art supply store or the muted collection. So if you're using these colors to build shadows or create kind of realism in your miniature painting art, I think these are gonna be a real, real winner. So, so pumped to give these a try. The next up here that's gonna be awesome as well is on the same page. And that is the Transparent Collection. We got Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and Raw Umber. It is very, very exciting. These are gonna be the same. You're gonna use these through the airbrush mostly to put nice neutral brown tints on the models you could use them as washes you could thin them down with like a vallejo flow improver you could mix them with like a flow improver mix them with contrast paint to alter tones very very versatile and really not that expensive i think they're even i mean twelve dollars for three bottles that's four bucks a bottle and these are pretty big bottles they're 30 mil each they come with droppers very good product so if you're new to miniature painting or if you're Definitely, if you're new to airbrush, get some of these inks because you're going to have so much fun shooting them through your airbrush. They're super fun to play with. They're good for glazes. They're good for, you know, creating your own washes or altering the color of washes. I have tons of inks over there. Most of mine are Dollar Rani. Let me jump back on the big one so I can show you this. I got Liquitex inks here. Sometimes the overspray of the airbrush gets them. And I got Dollar Rani inks here and they're just so much fun to shoot through the airbrush so if i haven't said it enough if you're using an airbrush pick up some of these inks and give them a try if you're not using an airbrush pick up one or two and give them a try another real winner quick tip a real real winner is the white ink now this muted set comes with white so if you really want a nice nice set Pick this one up. You got muted, like a purple, a turquoise, some red, a gray, a green, and white. And these ink whites are so, so good for putting those final little edge highlights on power weapons, dots and eyes, like the reflection in the lens, because they're so, so smooth and like a thin consistency paint. You don't have to worry about, you know, drying on your brush tip as fast as, say, an acrylic paint or a normal acrylic. These are liquid acrylics. Let's jump into the next one here. This is the Escoda, which you know from my most popular video on my channel. I still love the Escoda Kalinsky Sable brushes. This is their artist brush and hand soap made with virgin, extra virgin olive oil from Spain, just like all their products are handmade in Spain, or at least their uh, brushes are, and apparently their soap. So I picked that up. Smells like brush soap. Let's jump over so I can show you. There it is. Check it out. It does not quite look like theirs on the uh, Amazon there, but it's the same, I'm sure. This is mostly in Spanish, so I can't read it, but it does say soap for brushes and hands, 100% extra virgin olive oil. I'm very excited to try this. I use the Masters brush soap a lot, but this one's actually a little bar which Masters does make a little bar version too. But if you look at that, it's got a nice little bar. 
And inside here is little instructions. And it says, wash your brush, rub it on soap, rub the brush with the soap onto your hand, and then rinse the brush under a faucet. Super awesome. More information at escoda.com, it says. So if you want to check that out on escoda.com, definitely worth it. If you're not using brush soap, uh, definitely, definitely worth it. These things, like it's eight bucks, uh, but it's going to last you like a year probably, maybe longer. Maybe not if you're using it on your hands, of course, but if you're just rubbing your brushes on it, it's going to last you so long. And if you are using the ghost brushes, like you can see here, this one's got some paint built up on it or staining, you know, I can rinse it and then you would just rub it on to that, build up a lather, rinse it off, and that should help all your brushes last longer. So if you want to try and get your brushes clean and, you know, pra start practicing good brush care right now, of course it's going to help. Let's jump into the next one. These I'm so pumped for these. I haven't tried that soap yet, but I do use brush soap, so it's a new one. You know, and if it's better, it's better, right? And then we'll just switch over from Masters. I've never actually finished a Masters brush soap either, so they last forever. They Usually you just look at them and you're like, I'm just going to throw it away. It gets a little beat up. This one here, very, very common in miniature painting, but I've actually, uh, let's show you. This is the Liquitex Flow-Aid. Now, this one was really common for a while in miniature painting, and a lot of people, I think, switched to Flow Improver, to Contrast Medium, Lamian Medium, uh, various other paint retarders. But this one, <coughs> I haven't seen it as much lately, but we got the four ounce bottle here, which is right here on Amazon. And it's a pretty big bottle. So you're gonna use this to thin your paints. I've been experimenting. I really love the Air, uh, Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver for thinning some paints, especially thinning out washes or using inks plus that to make your own washes. It's so much fun. So I'm very excited to try the Flow Aid because what I wanna do in this bigger bottle, naturally Lamian Medium and Contrast Medium from Games Workshop are a little expensive. So on my wet palette, I would take a little water bottle cap and put some of this in there. And then that way I could just grab it with my brush while I'm working. And that I think is going to be a huge, huge bonus, especially if you're trying to glaze a power sword or really trying to push that, you know, dark shadow with that smooth gradient up to the highlight that a lot of the competition painters are doing. So I think this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful tool to try out and just an all around worthy product of checking out. Once again, it's $8, like the little contrast medium type thing. This is a Lamian medium here. And you could see the pretty significant difference here <laughs> for the same price. So if this one works as good, I'm gonna be very excited. If not, uh, we'll just use it for when we're doing like making washes, just like we do with some other products. Pretty much use anything for that. It's real, you know, always works really good. And let's show you what else we got. This one I'm really excited about. This one here is the brush cleaner and restore for dried acrylic and oil color. Non-hazardous, biodegradable, low vapor. I mean, that is everything you want from a heavy duty product that could be used for oil painting because oil painting super toxic uh, acrylic painting not so much but this one i got it here this bottle here and i've seen this on instagram and maybe facebook but for sure instagram somebody had posted that they i mean it was like a beat up brush and they soaked it i guess in this and it voila made the brush perfect again so i don't know what we're gonna try it on maybe maybe like an old beat up dry brush one of the ones that you know i used for years before i started developing the ghost dry brush which will be on kickstarter live january 17th it was going to be january 10th but i'm gonna have to push it back i believe so january 17th live on kickstarter but the uh 
the brush restorer and cleaner here says specifically dried acrylic. So this could be a game changer if this works as good as it seemed to on somebody's Instagram. So if you are having trouble with paint in your ferrule, uh, paint staining your brushes or you know damaging your tip because you're getting that pressure built up with dried paint, or maybe you're just not practicing great brush care, uh, this could be a game changer. I haven't tried it yet. I can't wait to try it. I'll probably make a video just on this one, but I'm going to have this, you know, and everything else linked below. And I think this is worth jumping on right away. Good painting habits, good brush cleaning habits, 2020. This next one is natural slate stone, slate gravel for miniature or fairy garden, right? Uh, let me show you this. This is right here for $11, it comes in a big bag, which I already threw away the bag, unfortunately, but where did I put it? Um, I've been using it just, oh, here we go. So what I did is I replaced, I dumped it out of the bag and put it in this chocolate covered blueberry container. And look how tiny it is. Like it is really, really cool. When you see some of those cool uh, rock formations on a miniature paint base, this is gonna be great. Sorry, I keep showing you the blueberries. I should just take that off. But this is gonna be so awesome. I've been having a lot of fun with it with just some Eldar guys where you take it, just dump some super glue on the base, randomly throw these rocks on. And then what I'm gonna do is take something like one of these mud products. These are the best. And you're just gonna use that to cover up and blend in those rocks so they look like they're stuck in the mud, stuck in the dirt. It's gonna be great. Uh, basing them, here's a war walker. You can see I actually put some of the Vallejo mud, the gray one, and you can see the rocks and the mud and everything's kind of working together. And we're gonna create some really cool bases and probably use some of this Morden Earth Crackle paint to create more texture. I do like making good bases for my models. I think it's highly important to getting a lot of people, especially when they walk by. If your army looks good and they're all standing on something beautiful, uh, people stop, people love it. So definitely worth checking out. If you've been looking for this type of product, this is the size. I do have some interest in trying one size bigger just for having the larger pieces if you want to make like maybe a character diorama style base or a big like vehicle base but for you know infantry guys this is the size you want 100 percent you're going to be and you can see right here i purchased it uh oh let me show you that just so yeah you see purchase one time here some of these products i got at arizona art supply here in arizona so some of them i bought on amazon sometimes i support my local stores and some of these you just find on amazon the next one here, this one's super fun. <laughs> uh, it's kind of maybe gross, but it's black static grass. So check this out. World War Scenics 4 millimeter black static grass sample bag. Uh, this one I purchased here on Amazon. And check it out. It came in this little bag, which if you know anything about static grass, I mean, that's actually a lot of static grass like you're going to be able to do a lot a lot of bases obviously unless you're covering the whole base with it you're going to run out but if you're using it just like patchwork and uh, i actually got this one because i was doing those slanesh demons and i thought this would look maybe like body hair let me grab one for you oh man i, I still got to finish these guys but what i was doing is on these bases here you can see it's like bloody skin is what I was going for. And uh, like Slanesh is in some weird pleasure part of the warp, you know, and they're like running around on tore up flesh because, you know, that's hot. And uh, I was hoping, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm hoping this looks kind of almost like body hair with just sprinkled on real sparsely. Like they're <laughs> running on some horrific like giant's body or something, whatever it is, right? So that's gonna be super gross and super fun when we get around to that. So I'm very, very excited to show you that one. Uh, this one's just a quick little pro tip here. Maybe not pro tip, but I've been using these 
for quite a while and I have quite a few of them. They are just the plateau uh, cutters here. Two dollars basically. Like pick these up. They're awesome. They're exactly what you want in a cutter. I think I have like 10 pairs of them now. I just buy them in bulk and I have one or two here on my desk. I have one in every possible box I'm going to be painting in out of or building models from. I have them in parts of the house, like a toolbox in the house. They're so cheap compared to the way more expensive hobby ones. If you followed along with the ghost brushes, you know how I'm a little bit against the uh, charging you more because of the word hobby. But these ones have a real flush uh, clamp. You can see, you can't even see through that, right? No light coming through. They're sharp, they're pointy. I mean, they, they're good. Definitely pick these up, $2. Like if you just need a couple extra pairs of those, like if you have to, you know, if you have a little kit that you like to go build miles at your local store, and then you have a paint table, pick up one or two of these guys because they're just so awesome for the price. It's exactly what you want for less than $3. I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. It's such a good thing. Now, this product here, I loved this glue. Plastistruct Plastic Weld 2 ounce bottle with applicator. This stuff was so awesome. You could almost brush it over mold lines and they would almost just melt away. When you put plastic models together and push those two parts together, the kind of melted plastic kind of creeps up and kind of, oh, let's go to the other side kind of squishes up and kind of fills in seam lines, but, and it has a brush. The problem is if you, hopefully you can, I don't know if you can see that. You see how it's sticking and I don't really have a good background, but it's like causing strings of plastic. So the problem is as this brush is used, it's wiping up it's melting the plastic. So it's also, I guess, wiping up melted plastic as you brush it and putting it back in here, you can see it gets really thick. Look how thick that is. This starts out really thin. So this glue was my absolute favorite. I loved it so much. I really think you'll like it if you haven't, you know, if you've only used super glue, like uh, Loctite, you know, super glue gel. If you haven't used this yet, uh, it's worth trying. And it's really, really great. But I've noticed I don't really care for how the bottle gets real thick at the bottom at the end. When it gets low like this, you have to tilt it. Like the brush, I don't know, you can't see it, but the brush only goes to like here. So when it's hanging out almost above the line, you have to tilt the bottle and tilt the brush to you know, get the glue along the side there. So when it gets low, it's a pain in the butt. So to try to solve that problem, we tried a new product. And that one is great, so, you know, 10 bucks. It lasts you a little while. I loved it for a long time. Now I'm trying this one, which is the Tamiya uh, Extra Thin Cement. And this little guy here, he's a little bit cheaper and it works just as good. Like you can't, because it doesn't have the big brush, you don't brush away necessarily like mold lines and stuff. But this one comes, instead of like a brush like that, it just has a teeny tiny little applicator. You see how tiny that is? And you just de touch it. You just touch it. You can hold the two pieces together, dry fit, touch the fit, and it will capillary action like zoop fill up the area so it's kind of cool you can dry fit your model then touch it with that and the glue will get in and you can glue your model that way very very cool i really like this a lot one thing that's really cool about the plastic cement glues first of all they don't stick to your fingers which is awesome they do soften the plastic so if you get a lot on your model and stick your, you know push your thumb in it you can leave a fingerprint not great but so don't do that but uh you get a little bit of work time as the plastic's kind of melted. You can kind of, you know, move that arm or position that gun. You know how sometimes the 
the gun and hand have to match. You could put that arm on and then, you know, make the model hold their weapon correctly, you know, instead of having it floating like a little centimeter above the hand, you could have it you know, flush. Super cool. Uh, and you can kind of be really generous just uh, dabbing it on and it doesn't, it's not like super glue. It's going to leave big caked on pools. It's so thin. As long as it touches the plastic and you don't touch the plastic, it's going to re-cure and not be soft anymore. So definitely check out the Extra Thin Cement 2020. Let's jump on here. One more thing. This is the panel line color black. Panel line accent color black for plastic models. This is an enamel paint. Uh, I got it right here. And what I do, it's got the same applicator. This is how it's, see that tiny little applicator? And you just touch it to all the rivets on your tanks. You touch it to all the little cracks and all the little decorative like grooves in like vehicles. If you take a, you know, like a Redemptor Dreadnought here and he's got all these little rivets on them and little grooves and you just start touching all of them, it leaves like a nice almost oil stain look, kind of a dark shadow around those areas. It's awesome. Now for a model this dark, it doesn't show up super, super powerful and this is the black panel liner but it does add that little extra depth and that little extra depth if you're trying to go a little farther on your miniatures sometimes is what makes it look just like pop look yummy look uh painterly have that little sense of realism or capture that you know just imagination or something about it it's that little extra depth in the shadows or that little extra detail of kind of some grime around each little bolt on the model so worth checking out Tamiya panel liner and they actually come in other colors this one's interesting here pink brown uh, but black and brown obviously are good choices the gray I'm not 100% sure how the light color or the dark brown that would be a nice one to try and they're cheap they're gonna last you a really really long time the only downside is they have a little bit of a smell to them because they're enamel so you know if you're really sensitive to paint fumes you might get a little little headache and that is all we have that we are excited about right now in 2020. Links for everything below. And any products of these you want me to test and make a, you know, its own video about it on, let me know below. If you're, <laughs> if you're excited to try any of these, if you try any of these, I would love for you to make a video so we could compare notes, especially these muted inks. Like, get these. So we can all have these and then all figure out how to make the most use out of them. I think they're going to be so much fun. So I'll talk to you soon. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the comments.